Okay, our sealer has dried. And you know what? I'm confident in the job it did in sealing this skull. I'm going to, I think I'm going to go ahead and use the natural skull bone. And what, the next thing I want to do before I start working on any clay is you can see down here where the clay contacts, where the, I'm sorry, where the, the acrylic sealer contacts the clay. Okay, well, what I want to do here is I want to be sure that I have a, a really clear demarcation line. In other words, I don't want the sealer that has run down in, onto the clay, I don't want that to create an area where the silicone can't tell the clay from the bone. So I'm simply going to run my modeling tool over the clay where it contacts the bone and just pull this away. Well, not pull it away. I'm just trying to over smooth the, the uh, acrylic sealer that has contact with the clay. I want a good, clean demarcation line where the clay meets the bone so that I know that I have a good crisp parting line between the upper skull or I should say the upper half of the skull and the then lower half of the skull so I'm gonna go <coughs> all around the perimeter here you can see the shine right here wherever there's shine showing on the clay I want to eliminate that by simply pressing onto the clay and if need be if I press the clay too far down I can easily take some of the warmed clay and put it on top. I just want to be sure that that there's a good separation of clay and bone and that the sealer did not cause it to join up and, and appear as one. And I think this is this is going along really, really well here. I'm real pleased. I'm real happy and I feel safe that the skull has been sealed in. Um, <clears throat> we have all these little surface cracks here that have been completely sealed. They're not only sealed uh, visually, they are sealed to the touch. They are definitely sealed in with this acrylic sealer and it's real important because I had a little hole here right at this portion right here there was a little a little break in the bone structure itself and I wanted to be sure that this was filled in and it has certainly filled in now Will I leave this on the skull after molding? Probably not. Probably not. It will be washed away with alcohol. Uh, it'll take several wiping, several wipings down to remove it, but it will be removed. But it's it's bone dry. This is very very well sealed right now. So I'm really confident that I'm not going to have any silicone seeping into or under the bone. I'm going to be sure I take plenty of time when I set my clay work here and that I'm going to have a good good separation of bone and clay. And I'm going to go over this with a magnifying glass and I'm going to make sure that there are no more areas that need uh, any attention as far as sealer is concerned. It's gotten in here along all of the sutures. It's gotten in here along the joints. Um, these were super glued back in place and there was super glue applied to these areas as well. Right here, I put a little bit of clay filler in this area right here, right where, right where the glare is, right there. 
there's a little bit of clay that filled in that area but all of the cracks the original damaged part when it when it came where it broke off here the cracked and repaired areas here on the side of the skull these are all now well sealed I can see visually see the sealer has gotten in there so with that I'm going to continue to uh, create a good separation between sealer and clay and be sure that the bone has some well-defined well-defined yeah. edges. Um, this idea is working out pretty well. I've got the interior here closed off from the rest of the eye socket. I say it's it's simply it's simply a wall. All right, that's all that's required. It's just a wall. Um, the crown piece here. I know it looks silly, but I modeled that over one of the castings. So I wouldn't have to mess around with the skull too much. I didn't want to apply too much pressure. So that was modeled over the top of this. And the nice thing is, this all fits into the box like so. Or I should say the box fits around it like so. This is nice and tight. And it will be even tighter here. Okay. Now, as you can see, the top of this, you know, is not flat across and does not need to be at this point. Uh, the only thing that needs to be flat across the top is the silicone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue extending this clay from this point out to the end of the box. I'm going to clean up the rest. I'm going to smooth the rest of this up. Um, when I come back, I'm going to show how I install the clay on the inside of the eye socket on the left here. Okay. And then... Um, I'm going to show how I'm going to put some marking points, locking points. I may use one or two of those locking key buttons that we used earlier, as well as putting in a couple of uh, dimples, okay, into, into the clay. As many locking points as possible. No channels. The channels tend to weaken it. I'm going to definitely put um, either brush handles and whatnot to push in, but that will come later. That will come later. But for now, we're looking good. This idea is working well. Um, fingers crossed. Let's keep it going. Well, here we are. At this point in time, I have the entire, this entire right side of the skull uh, clayed in around the eye orbit and the interior of the eye socket. Uh, you can see in here, let's put a little light in there. A little extra light. And... Hopefully you can see in here what's been done. Now, one of the ways to check your work, and one of the ways I check my work, um, besides using flashlights, of course, but in a, in a tight quarter like we have here in the eye socket, okay, one of the things that helps an awful lot is to have one of these uh, uh, dental examination or dental exam mirrors. I have two. I have this one and one with a little shorter handle. Now what I do to make sure I've got my clay right up on the bone where it needs to be, I will take this, put it into the eye socket, and I'll check. And I can see what I can't, you know, what I can't see visually with my eye, I can check with the mirror. Okay, I can make sure that I've gotten this entire interior section clayed off properly. Okay, it's a handy dandy little tip when you're doing things like this. Every, every advantage you can give yourself is a good one. All right, now let's just show, back off a bit, and let's show what this, uh, a comp, um, accomplished here. Now, this side here fills in right up to the box. Okay. I hope you can all see that on this side here. Right? Radio. Alright. Also, I did 
go across with my large clay cutter and I, I did even off the top and the way I did that was just quite simple I simply went across I laid this across the wood and gently 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 worked it across until I cut this piece flat which allows me to completely cover and encase the box and then allows me to place the cover on top of this until I get back to it tomorrow all right I've taken the original mold that I made I just simply put it on top to just weight the top down on, on the wooden box why cover it well this will keep dust from falling down into the mold onto the clay all right, keep it as clean as possible. I'm real pleased with the way this is um, coming along here. Um, I will show how this side was accomplished on the opposite side on camera um, when I continue this. Then we will have the front part of the mold. Okay, this will then be filled with silicone. When this sets, clay will be removed. The buttons will be pulled out of the, of the silicone as we did on the bottom of the other mold. And silicone will be treated with a Vaseline separator. And the, back, the rear side of the box mold will be filled. And this will allow me to pull the skull out of the mold without any damage. And that's the goal, um, is to create, the goal of this whole exercise is to create a mold for a cat skull that will bring it out without damaging the bejesus out of it like the first one did. Um, like I say, that the mistake there was I used the method for primate skulls, which is excellent for primate skulls, not so good for kitty cat skulls or any other, um, many other skulls are, have the same construction they have the same um, uh, frontal orbital bone structure on the top and uh, uh, the, the little rise along the zygomatic arch. Um, so you, there is a, a way to make molds. You just got to figure out how. And like I said, each one of these projects is an adventure. It is a learning experience. Um, I've made many, many molds of my horse sculptures. I've made molds of nose casts of uh, you know death masks and things like that over the years um, skulls are a whole different ball game and um, while I was pleased with the way the the mold came away from the skull I was not pleased with the damage caused and I was not real hip on the repairs that needed to be made to each casting that came out each part that came out so this is going to bypass the need for any repairs well here we are at the next day and it's another wonderful spring day here in Ohio we have a outdoor temperature of 49 degrees on this 16th day of May which is really ridiculous but anyway after a couple of days of really severe weather including a tornado that went through nearby we're back and having fun in the shop at the mold making station now the way I'm gonna fill in this eye socket is I first begin first I first begin by pressing a piece of clay into the eye socket and I want to make sure that it lines up along the same plane as the the one on the right side did and then I simply press towards the back of the eye socket on the skull and down now as you can see here there's a, a bit of a gap okay this needs to be filled so the clay needs to be brought up to that level and the way I do that is to carefully come in 
from the front, and this time I'm going to attach it to a modeling tool, come in from the front and push this into place using fingers and modeling tool and all kind of goodies. Now I want to begin smoothing all this together. All right. I want to smooth this piece of clay to the big piece of clay and then put a little extra light down here so you can see. I want to smooth the small piece to the large piece and then I want to bring this all into contact with this part of the skull here and I'll be adding little bits of clay as I go. We bring this up and we go carefully. You see there's a where this where this zygomatic arch you can see the crack here where it broke way back in time. So I want to bring this clay up real carefully. I want to bring it right up to the bone and drag some clay forward to meet and then smooth it with the tool as I go. And I want a nice neat parting line. And I'm going to make sure it goes from the center of this bone down. We take away any excess clay forward. And we model the clay backward. This is why we put such big pieces in. And they're worked away little by little by little. 